Thank you, Madam Speaker, and uh, it's been a uh, lively debate today. Heard a lot of these debates during the Labor Committee with my good friend over there, the Chairman Porter. And it was funny. I was, uh, you know, it's been a tough week for all of us. We've been here late, getting home late. The time I get home back to New Fairfield, it's well after midnight, uh, pretty much every night this week. And I. Sh stumbled into the coffee shop, the local coffee shop in New Fairfield this morning, and the usual cast of char characters were there, sitting at the table, and uh, any time I go into the coffee shop, they'll ask me questions about what we're doing up here in Hartford. And the first question was, well, uh, Smith, what's going on with the tolls? And I said, well, it's uh, probably for a later date, we'll have to deal with that. I said, but. We are taking up, I understand, paid family medical leave. And around the table was the owner of the small coffee shop. And he said, oh, that's good. You know, we, you know, we can support that. And it's kind of similar to the poll, actually, that Representative Porter and some of the other colleagues here have discussed today. Because when you hear and you ask folks on the street about paid family medical leave, they are pretty much in favor of it a great majority of folks are in favor of paid family medical leave. When I asked the owner, or told the owner about the details of the bill, the fact that there was a payroll tax, a one half of 1%, the fact that it applied to every employee, and this is a small business owner, um, the fact that he would have to replace the employee while that particular employee was out 12 weeks, with a different employee, and then when that old employee came back, the new employee would have to be let go, and he or she would receive unemployment benefits, which of course would increase his rates. So when I told him that, the response went from, oh, that's a good idea, to why are we doing this? And again, this is the This is the sense that we're getting when I'm talking to the folks in my neighborhood, in my small businesses, is why are we doing this? And I think the perception is, and the perception has been that the Republicans or this side of the aisle are not in favor of paid family medical leave. And nothing could be further from the truth. We are, in fact, in favor of it. What we're not in favor of is the way it was set up. And, you know, Representative Wood mentioned how un unfortunate it was that it wasn't really a dialogue back and forth. Now, Representative Porter and I have always had a good dialogue, and I've offered earlier on uh, in this session my assistance with this bill to try to make it a more fair bill, in my perception, uh, a bill that we could support, a bill that the public could support and the you know, small businesses could support, except that offer was... Uh, not ex well, it was, I'm sure it was accepted, but it really nothing came of it. So we are left with what we have here today. And unfortunately, what we have here today is just another I guess another damaging business bill to our community. I've fought against bills that have been against our, our, our businesses and the chairman has indicated, and some other colleagues on the Democratic side have indicated this is actually going to be good for business. Now, I'm a small business owner, as many of the folks here have testified already are small business owners. Reporter, I don't know what you do for, for your livelihood other than here in the chamber. We haven't sat down and had that lunch yet. Um, I don't know if you're a small business owner. I don't know how many folks on your side of the aisle are small business owners. But I will tell you as a small business owner from my own perspective, the difficulty it will impose by requiring every single employer, employee to pay into this system and have the option to utilize this system will be devastating to the small employer. And here's why. I'm just, I'll use me as an example because I know my business best and I don't want to speak on other businesses' behalf. As an attorney, and I run my own business, I have two paralegals. One works in Florida, 
remotely, and one is in the office every day. If the one who's in the office every day or the one who's in Florida were to utilize this program, I have to find another trained paralegal to handle real estate closings, to handle litigation matters, to handle estate matters, to handle wills, to handle all the things we do as a small business owner. That may sound easy. I tell you it is not easy. There's not too many paralegals just hanging out there waiting for a 12-week job. And what it then does is put the onus on me as a business owner if I can't find somebody to actually do the job myself, which is fine. Uh, I can do it, and I have done it. But it requires then working more than the 50 hours a week that we normally work. So we'd have to come in on weekends, and that may not be a concern to anybody over there, but it is a concern to the small business owner who's actually trying to make ends meet and fit in the demands of what we call normal life outside the work. It will be a huge impact for the small business owner. And I know when we were discussing this in the Labor Committee, and this came around the table, about the opportunity to have 25 employees or 30 employees. I know the federal level is 50, and I know we weren't going to get to 50 as much as I would love to see that. So I said, why, why not 25, Madam Speaker? Why not 30? Because if you have an employer who has 25 to 30 individuals, they can make up the work or cover the work within that grouping. The employer who has five, even 10, it becomes very, very difficult. So I, I again, I'm appealing to my colleagues on the other side who have their own businesses. If you have your own businesses, to actually think about how that impacts you, how that will impact your business. If you lose, think about this. If I had both paralegals out at the same time, and it could very easily happen, right? If you look under the terms of the bill, what a serious illness or a birth or a death, it could easily happen at the same time. That's two folks who basically are a significant portion of the business now gone without replacement, unless you can find somebody to have that same degree level of skill and who can come into the business and take over. That's a great impact. 25 or 30 people, you'll be able to cover that. So we'll have some amendments coming out in a little bit asking the good chairman to consider reducing it. Now, I don't know what your answer will be. I, I get a feeling, but um, I would encourage you to consider it as a small business owner because it's, it's impactful. Again, I will say on behalf of myself and the colleagues I've talked to over here, we are in favor of paid family medical leave. But it has to be sustainable and it has to be fair to the employer and to the employee. I think 25 to 30 would be a fair compromise. And I'm asking you to consider that. It's not before you at the moment, but it will be. And I know the chamber is kind of empty and it's dinner time, but uh, hopefully they're listening as well. There's there's a lot of holes in the bill. There's a lot of questions in the bill. There's a lot of things in the bill that could have easily uh, been changed to satisfy uh, folks on this side of the aisle. Uh, the number of employees who, are, who would be a, uh, eligible to participate under the program, the option to opt out of the program, um, the fact of not being 90%. I mean, there's a litany of ideas that we proposed on the committee level that we're not well taken, I guess, and here we are. So uh, it's another business bill that's not good for Connecticut. Um, I wish I could say it were. As I said when I started out my dialogue, um, I'm in favor of paid family medical leave. Uh, I think there's a place for it. I think there's a need for it. But I think it should be something that's 
fair to both sides, the employer and the employee. And uh, I hope when we propose some amendments later on during the evening that the, they will, in fact, be well received. But thank you for the time, Mr. Speaker, as well.